Uh, in this video, we will learn about the basic concept of Java messaging system. So what we are going to learn in this video is about messaging and message and Java messaging services, or which also called Java message service, messaging models, and then WebLogic server JMS components. So what exactly is messaging? Okay, let us begin with a very small example, okay, because we, so as of today, we all know that we are in a digital world, okay, we are doing it. Uh, most of the works online with the help of uh, mobile applications and by using the computers, web browsers and websites, okay? So if we compare with these all the transactions that we are doing digitally as of today, okay, with uh, some years back, okay, that yeah. at that time, what we were doing is about, we were doing the same kind of a transactions, but the details of all the transactions were on the paper, which is now on the digital system, right? So as of today in digital world, everything is getting processed online, okay? And then when we talk about a couple of years back, the same information were processed by the manual process, okay? That means the data or the records, the transaction details, everything were on the paper. And now we have all the data on your computer or you can say in your database, okay? So if we compare, the online transactions with the manual transactions. So what we had earlier is that we have same information on the paper when we talk about the invoices, okay? What exactly there in the invoice? There is an invoice number, uh, the name of uh, the purchaser, the name of the vendor, the address of the vendor and the address of the purchaser, uh, the total amount of the product he bought and then uh, tax amount and then a lot of other things are there in the invoice, okay? Same information which was there in the manual invoice, now we have in our systems, right? So everything, when we talk about the invoice, when we talk about the receipts, everything is generated online, okay? For example, if we take the example of e-commerce transactions, when you bought anything on the e-commerce website, okay? You place the online order and then immediately you get your online invoice as well, right? That is the same copy of which we were earlier had the manual uh, invoice. So immediately, uh, uh, a manual invoice, uh, which was there as a manual. Now today it, uh, it generated online, right? You get your invoice immediately. And then after that, your transaction get placed with the vendor. And then from vendor, uh, it goes to uh, some different stakeholders. Okay. And then from there, it, it, there could be multiple stakeholders holders in a e-commerce business. But as an end customer, you place the order. If the order is went to the <clears throat> a vendor, then vendor dispatch the product to you, okay? It is delivered to your home. And in between, you get a lot of SMS as well. You get the emails confirmation as well. You can go in on the website and mobile application and you can check your status of your order as well, where exactly it is, okay? So everything is happened digitally, online, right? So that means there has to be some information that in getting processed from one location to different location, maybe from your computer to your uh, a vendor computer or or you can say to your vendor database and from there could be to a dispatch party to, could be to a different uh, third party stakeholders right they all are communicating with each other at the real time or maybe at not the real time okay but the important concept here is that certain kind of a data getting exchange between the different stakeholders in an e-commerce transactions right so how this data is getting processed, okay? So when we talk about the invoice, which contain uh, your address, your phone number, and then vendor address, your address, and a lot of other information, right? So that all the data has been processed online. That means the data is getting transferred from one location to different location, or you can say from one application to different applications with the help of certain kind of a message, okay? And what exactly they're in message? It's completely your data. So as of now, we are specifically talking about the invoicing. So your invoice data is getting processed from one location or from one application to different application, okay? So this is a very basic example of, you can say about the digital transaction and what exactly we have uh, there in the message. So what exactly is messaging? So messaging means exchanging information between different components in the same system or different systems, right? So same, what does it mean is the same system and different system is that? So that means your application, which is sending the message and the different application, which is receiving the message, okay? They could be on the same computer or maybe same system, or there could be different. For example, if you are uh, uh, sending, you have a different uh, uh, partners in your business, okay? And then 
the information is getting uh, processed and then it is getting transformed from one business partner to second business partner those may be using their different different applications right so that is called a different system or it can happen in either a synchronous manner or asynchronous manner so synchronous manner is that a transaction that need to be processed at the real time and need the response immediately okay for example when we talk about uh, uh, whenever you use uh, your atm to withdraw money or whenever you do the online transaction and do the payment okay at that time your account has to be debited immediately if we have paid 200 online then that 200 amount need to be debited immediately from your account otherwise there could be a lot of consequences of that one if, if, if this will not debit it immediately right and then certain kind of a transactions that is called a, a need to be processed in a synchronous manner that is means the immediate response is not really required for example when you do the online transactions okay then there is invoice is generated and then uh, there is a specific timelines when the invoice or information is passed to different vendors and then vendor get that information and they took they take time to process your order to dispatch the items and send it to the courier partner third party agency okay so there there is no immediate uh, kind of a response is required because there is a specific timelines for processing of each and every phase of in that case right so that is called a asynchronous kind of a manner and what is messaging so message is a piece of information as we discuss about a uh, information that is there in the invoice now it can be text it can be xml document it can be json data or an entity which is called a java object so these are specifically in terms of programming okay how the data is get exchanged from one application to different applications there could be a lot of different ways for that one you can send it in a text file you can send it the information or your data in xml file or xml document in json format or maybe in the form of java objects so what exactly is jms is jms stand for java message service or java messaging system okay and then java uh, and JMS API is a Java API which contain a common set of interfaces to implement enterprise-based messaging system. So that means in J JMS, you have an API, application programming interface, which is called a Java API. Okay? That is specifically the terms that is related to the Java application development. So when we are saying that JMS is a Java messaging service, okay, which is implemented in your Java-based applications okay to exchange the information that means you have to write certain kind of a code for that right so that one application send a message to some different application and then then, then the different applications can receive the message from application a that means for that you have to design a program you have to write certain kind of a programmings for that one and for to write the programs for that you can use java api so java api is used to implement messaging system in java based applications only so java so jms api is specifically a java based system okay and it can be used to design or develop java based applications only okay and to create a jms application use java x dot jms api so if you have a certain kind of a programming experience or maybe you have a certain kind of clarity on how to write the programs then there are certain kind of a libraries that is called the inbuilt code that you can implement in your programs right uh, to re reuse the existing components that is there in certain kind of a <clears throat> Uh, softwares okay so similarly with java uh, there is a uh, java api that is called java x dot jms okay the, which is used to develop your messaging system so java or you can say jms api is used to create send receive and read messages or exchange messages between different application or different systems so in a nutshell when you wanted to have an enterprise application in place where they wanted to exchange the data or your system is uh, is need to send data to some different applications or different systems for that you have to write certain kind of programming code okay and then for that you can use the J jms apis to create send receive or read the messages so once we develop a java messaging system with jms api then we can deploy the same application in any jms provider software right so when your code is developed you need a certain execution engine for that one right for example when you write a java program then use the you use a java or jvm right for executions of your programs you compile the program and then you run the program uh, to get your output of your programs similarly in an enterprise world uh, when you write a java messaging system programs using jms api then you need to deploy that uh, that code in certain kind of applications or certain kind of software right so that it can be accessible for the outer world and that is called a jms provider software if you heard about the Oracle Web Logic Server or IBM WebSphere, 
okay they are the application servers which also act as you can say jms provider software so when we talk about java messaging models so there are two type of java messaging model okay the one is called point to point and second is called a uh, public subscribe okay so it is very clear from the name as well when we talk about point to point that means message is transferring from one point to another point okay so p2p messaging model enable the delivery of message to exactly one recipient okay that means if a message need to be delivered to only one recipient or you can say only to one client then we can use the p2p messaging system which is also called a queue okay so queue is that a queue or a queue sender which is also called a producer send a message to a specific queue and a queue receiver consumer receive message from a specific queue that means a sender which also called a producer of message because he is sending us uh, the message right and a receiver also called as a consumer because it receive the message so when you wanted to have a, a certain kind of a programming where a message need to be delivered to only one client then you have to implement queues okay so that when a message is get placed in the queue only one client can take that message from that queue that means a message a single message will not be delivered to the multiple clients or to multiple receivers or multiple consumers and when we talk about public publish and subscribe okay it is very clear from the name as well that one message is get publish in a certain area from there it can be sent or it can be picked up by the multiple clients and for that if you wanted a certain kind of a programming where a message need to be sent to multiple clients okay then you have to implement topic in a nutshell in a messaging model you have a queue and a topic if you wanted to send the message to only a single application then you have to use a queue but if you want your message to be picked up by the multiple clients or multiple receivers then you have to implement topic okay and each model is implemented with classes that extend common base classes and for example the p2p class has javax.jms.queue and the public and subscribe class is javax.jms.topic so as i said you have to write a certain kind of a program using the jms api where the main api is javax.jms and if you wanted to implement the queue then you have to import this class that is called javax.jms.queue and similarly if you want to use a topic then you have to import the class javax.jms.topic in your program when you are writing the program now if let us understand it's it's uh, how exactly it works when we talk about uh, the web logic server okay and what are the main components of jms so for example there is an application a which we are saying as a client or a sender and this application need to send data to a different application a which is on a different system which is also called a receiver okay and there has to be a jms provider in between so when what i have taken is about web logic server so application a is in a different system which is we are saying client or sender this need to send data to application a which is on a different system you can consider this application as application b as well which is a receiver and the messaging system in between is your web logic server that means the code that you have developed for the messaging system that code you have deployed on your web logic server right so your application a send messages to destinations right so as i said you need to define a queue and topic right for your messages okay so if you want to deliver your message uh, to has to be delivered to only one client okay then you can define queue in your program and if you want your message to be pick up by the multiple client then you can define topic in your program okay and this message has to be received at a different application end which is also called a receiver okay this will receive the message again in the queue and topic right because message will go to your queue or topic okay so based on the kind of your logic if application a is sending your message to a particular queue right that means this will this queue will act as a receiver from application a okay and similarly your application a or you can also say application b which is in a different system will receive the message from the same queue or maybe from the same topic right and this queue and topic will be defined in your web logic server so if two different applications need to send to data each other and there is a web logic server in between that means both application need to be connected with your web logic 
server to send your message and to receive your message okay so for connecting your applications with your web logic server or you can say with a jms provider you can define connection factory in web logic server okay so what exactly connection factory is you can say it is a lookup services which also called a jmdi java naming directory interface okay so what exactly it is it is a lookup service that means when application a will connect with the jms provider and similarly application b which will which is a receiver will also connect with the jms provider there has to be something that need to be so that they can identify the jms provider so for that you define the connection factory and to connection factory you give a specific name which is called a jndi and with the help of that particular gi jndi of your connection factory your application connect with the jms provider and once it is connected with the help of jms connection factory it create the session the session is get created okay and once session is created your application will send a message to a particular queue and your different application will pick up the message from that particular queue or maybe from the topic okay that means your jms provider will receive and store the messages okay and this messages can be stored in your file system or can be stored in your database depend on the kind of a configurations that you have defined for your jms provider so, so you have two options either you can store your messages in your file system label or you can store your messages in your database and this is called message persistence okay message is getting stored in your jms provider so now in a nutshell you have a connection factory right it will work as a lookup services which will connect with your jms provider so it create a connection right and once a connection is created that means a session is established between your application and then your jms provider okay and after that if your application is producing a message that means it is if it is sending a message then it is act as a message producer and then that means it is it will send your uh, message to a particular destination and destination you can define as either queue or a topic right similarly if your application or maybe you can say about a different application which need to receive the message okay again it will receive the message from a, the destination and if this application acting as a message receiver then it will connect with a particular destination which could be a queue or a topic and then it will receive the message from that destination so this is all about some basic concept of uh, a jms service in the logic server thanks for watching this video